Hello again and welcome. Today's video is going to be number four in the Beginner's Guide Revisited series and I'm going to be covering the skew chisel. From the outset um, I'd like to say I'm not an expert by any means with the skew chisel however I think I've got a fair understanding as to the mechanics that are required to achieve the best from the tool and this doesn't mean to say I reiterate that I'm able to achieve this every time I pick up the skew chisel however it is a very versatile tool and can if used properly leave a really superb finish production turners around the world use the skew chisel on a regular basis not because they want the kudos or for people to say oh look how good he is with that tool they use it because it is the most efficient and cost effective tool in their armory our own homegrown Steve Jones is a prime example of this a wood turner, production wood turner um, who has been at the game for well over 30 years now and for the majority of that time during his production runs he uses the skew chisel because it is an extremely efficient tool and time is money so the more pieces he can produce the quicker the better it is for him. Us mere mortals however have to flounder if you like because we just don't spend the time practicing with this tool or any tool in fact um, but that is just a fact of life. Hopefully this video will give you some hints and tips to enable you to practice and to achieve a better standard of performance with the skew chisel. I'm going to start off by just going through the various characteristics and then we'll get into the video and hopefully you'll enjoy. Now here we have three of the square fast stock skew chisels that I have. Uh, they are all made from quarter inch thick stock. Uh, this one is a quarter inch, three quarter inch and a half inch width. Now the first one here is a standard grind. Uh, this is called the toe, the pointy end and the base is called the heel. And the don't get too hung up with angles etc. Experiment and find out what works for you. This particular one here has a 55 degree angle from the toe to the heel and the bevel angle is 25 degrees and I just find that works well for me and you can see that the bevel obviously is ground equally on both sides. The next one is a radius skew. Uh, this is again made from quarter inch thick bar stock and it's three quarter inches in width and it has a gentle radius from the toe to the heel and again the bevel angle is 25 degrees. And lastly is the one inch wide skew. Uh, again it has a 25 degree bevel and I don't know if the camera will pick this up but on this particular one to about that area there it's ground straight across there and then the radius starts from about that point there. The reason for that is it makes for a nice peeling cut and a nice square shoulder when doing a, a tenon etc should you want to use it for that purpose and again the reason for the radius skews personally as I said in the beginning I'm no expert I find the radius skew quite a bit more forgiving than the straight over but that is just a personal opinion and one final design I have is the round skew uh, this is actually made from half inch round stock um, again a 25 degree bevel on both sides and I have a very very gentle slight radius there uh, that is just again personal preference. There is one other design of skew available it's called the oval skew I don't actually own one because I don't like them but again that's just personal preference. Okay so we're going to start off with the half inch regular shape skew chisel. Now I've made a mark here with a sharpie now what you want to do is to keep the cut between that line there and the heel ideally in between the both and that's a sort of a guideline. The tool rest for a sh uh, what we call a planing cut which is this is a piece of dry oak for a planing cut is just on 
centre height. For me, that's what I like to do. So again, before we actually turn the lathe on, what I suggest you do is do it by hand. So you anchor, get the bevel rubbing. Now what you want to try and do is you want the point, the pivot point, to be directly underneath the point where it's cutting on the edge. So we're talking about this sort of a position. Now normally I would do an overhand, but I think for the for the camera this would be better. So you rub the bevel, you lift the handle. Now you can see that it's starting to cut there. So what you have to do is just move the handle like so, and you can see where you're getting your cut. So the first chisel I'm going to use on the planing cut is the standard grind. Again, the usual thing, get everything set up, get yourself nicely balanced, and start the lathe. Got to be turning at about 16, 1700 revs, something like that, nothing too excessive. Make sure everything is locked down. Get yourself nice and comfortable, as I say. Rub the bevel, lift the handle, and get your cut and move along the work. And that's all there is to it. Now what you have to do is to keep everything in the same plane. A little bit of a ridge there because I wasn't really comfortable. We'll try again. Rub the bevel, lift the handle, get your cut. Cuts too high, right, cuts right there. Now maintain everything throughout the cut. Off the end. Not too bad there, went a little bit off here. Now that's the standard skew. <coughs> now the same principle applies to the radius skew and this is the one that I'm happier with. Same thing again, anchor, bevel, lift the handle, twist, start to get your cut and move across the work, keeping everything in the same plane as you can as you're going along the length of the work. Now I'm much happier with the radius skew, it's just me. And you can see there a really nice finish. The most important thing as I keep saying is once you've got the cut started is concentrating on keeping the cut in the same position. Now if you look at this for example got the cut started there. Now if I lift the handle too much the cut's going to be creeping up the blade. Now what you don't want, and we'll turn the lathe down for this, as Eddie Castlin used to say, no hero moves. Now if we start in here and we're going along and we're not concentrating now I've lost the bevel there, it's starting to, to judder a bit. And you can see now, I'm lifting the handle, I'm lifting the handle, and what's going to happen? If it hits that top point, we're going to get a catch. Because that point is digging in. Now the thing is, with the radius skew, you have a little bit more forgive forgiveness, because it's not a straight Edge. We have the round skew and the same principles apply where you will rub the bevel, twist the handle slightly, raise the handle, start to get your cut and move along the wood.
keeping the cut in the same position all the way along the cut. So that is quite an effective tool as well. So now I've got to show you the peeling cut and the peeling cut basically is a cut across the end grain of the blank to make a nice smooth flat surface. Now you can do it with the regular skew, I feel much happier as with most of my skew work with the radius skew so I shall be doing it there. And we're looking again to be, we're going to be using the, the toe of the chisel and the idea is to get the nearermost bevel at 90 degrees to the blank and that gap there between the face of the blank and the bevel to be as small as possible but be aware if you go too far you will get a catch so keep it a bit out until you've done a bit of practicing and get that as tight as possible to the face of the blank and you'll get a really nice cut okay so again the lathe is about 1500 on this one so you want the bevel at 90 degrees and then make your entry and what you're doing is lifting the handle and slicing through the wood. Now I came off that because my bevel wasn't, didn't stay at 90 degrees. So pick up the cut again, keep that bevel lift. Now I'm not the world's best as I've explained but you can see the idea. A really nice finish. We'll have one more go and keep the bevel at 90 degrees, make your entry and keep as close as you can too bad a non sort of dry hard oak that leaves a nice surface so there is another cut that you can use the skew chisel for okay and the next cut is going to be a convex cut around the corner now there's two methods you can use you can use the either the heel the heel or the toe so we'll use the heel to start with so a standard planing cut to begin with but one thing that is important is that you don't try and keep the pivot there and go round like so, you do get into trouble. What you've got to do is to start your cut and then lift the handle and again the old adage of keeping the shaving coming from the same part. Once you've started your cut, keep the shaving coming from the same part of the edge and work your way to the middle. So we'll turn him on, pick up the cut, we're going to be using a, and move along the tool rest, lifting. When you get to this bit and you, this part and you're going in, don't forget to keep moving the chisel. You'll be moving it across the tool rest here because obviously you're going straight, but as soon as you want to start going in, lift, move along and don't fall off the cut like I did. Work your way to the middle. And as I say then you can use the toe in the same manner, pick up your cut
and sometimes it's actually easier to use the toe because you can actually see the cut easier. And then a final one maybe. So you see how you can, and it leaves a nice finish obviously, because it's the skew chisel. Just get rid of that little dimple at the end and you can pick up a cut, rub the bevel, pick up the cut, and there you go. And now the V-cut, and a V-cut is very easy to do. Again, you make your entry and here and, and there's your V-cut. And finally, I just wanted to show uh, a piece of, this is a piece of larch, I think, very soft wood, very wide grain wood, um, what finish you can get with the skew on a planing cut, even on wood like this, so rub. Now as I've said, I'm no expert, but you can see, and I'll pan Come in on, on that little focus. bit. There you go a really smooth surface straight off the tool. Well, I hope some of you newer turners found some information within that video of use. The whole idea of the video is to convey my thoughts on methods and techniques I believe to be necessary to get the best out of the skew chisel. Um, as I demonstrated there, I certainly am no expert with it, um, which is possibly frustrating because I, I know what I should be doing, but I can't always do it. I mean, some days it works well and other days it doesn't. And when you're juggling with two cameras and angles and everything else, that doesn't help either with a tool that you're not really at home with. But it is a great tool to persevere with because the results can be really quite superb. Well thank you very much indeed for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Cheers now.